Sound speeds. When it comes to recording loud sounds like gunfire, for example, people online love to voice their opinion, whether they're informed or not. Shocker, right? Like, for example, people love to recommend dynamic microphones because they have no maximum SPL specification. And to record in 32-bit floating point. Seriously? Okay, I understand the reason why people are recommending using dynamic microphones, and it is true. There's not normally a maximum SPL specification, and if there is, it's normally extremely high, so at least I understand where you're coming from, and it kind of makes sense. But let me ask, is maximum SPL the single most important thing to keep in mind when recording a loud source? Dynamic microphones are not normally anywhere near as sensitive as condensers. They cannot pick the entire human hearing frequency range up like a condenser can. And if you're talking about detail, clarity, and overall fidelity, a dynamic can't touch a condenser. Why don't we listen to a few samples that I recently recorded at a gunfiring range, and you tell me which one sounds best. Everything from the crack where the bullet broke the sound barrier to the trail off sounded better on the condenser microphone, wouldn't you agree? And get this, the condenser microphone was only about two feet away from the barrel of an AR-15. Two feet, half a meter, that's close. So why didn't the condenser microphone get blown? Because I use AKG C4000Bs with a maximum SPL of 155 dB. And if you know your firearms, you're going to say, but wait a second, AR-15s, don't they normally go up to about 10 dB higher than that? usually around 167 dB? You're correct. So why didn't it get blown? Well, I've used these particular AKG C4000Bs on many TV shows, and getting them very close to gunfire, they've never ever failed me. So I decided to take a gamble, and it paid off. I do want to add that when I was recording each audio sample, I did underdrive each microphone by about 30 dB. So, for example, the dynamic microphone has a sensitivity of negative 51 dB, so I only gave it 21 decibels of gain. But the condenser microphone was a little more problematic because it has a sensitivity of negative 32 dB, and the Mix Pre 6 I was recording on only goes down to as low as adding 6 decibels of gain. So I had to use a Triton Audio Airhead, which is basically like a Fedhead Phantom, but instead of applying gain, it cuts 15 decibels instead. And that allowed me to lower by 15 decibels the gain, and then I dropped 15 more on the preamps. So I was able to achieve only 2 decibels of gain. And that is important to note, because I did not want to clip either of these microphones in my audio recording. But that brings up an interesting point. 32-bit floating point, actually. If I use 32-bit floating point, I won't be able to clip them. So that's obviously going to be the way to go, right? Well, if I use 32-bit floating point, I also will not be able to use my limiters. Should I be using my limiters? So I tell you what, I have two pairs of matching microphones, two dynamics, two condensers, the same ones you just heard, and I'm going to set them only 20 decibels apart. And now let's listen to some audio samples.
So you see, you may think you need 32-bit floating point going into it, but if you're honest with yourself, it's not really got an interesting sound unless you smack that limiter just a bit and really feel the impact. Plus, that increased level is going to help you record that trail off, which sounds really good if you're recording in a valley or up in the mountains or something. So my recommendation, use a large diaphragm condenser microphone with at least a maximum SPL level of 150 decibels, you know, plus or minus depending on what you're recording. And know your gear, test them out, go to a firing range, try some loud sounds, and know your gear before you step out into the field and you end up clipping your microphone. And also test your levels. Set your gain so that way it's going to be enough to get a nice hard smack on the limiter and it plays nicely and you get a good trail off and everything, but not so loud that it just sounds completely garbled or like this. I got that one a little bit too close to a microphone. And I also recommend recording in 24-bit bit depth. Now, I do also want to say, record loud sounds like gunfire and stuff safely. It's much more important for you to be safe than it is for you to get a recording. There's going to be another take, but there's not going to be another you, so record safely. That is most critical. Thank you for tuning into this episode of Sound Speeds, and be sure to tune in the future for more advice that will save you from crazy internet advice, despite the fact that this is also the internet, and sound advice. Have a question you'd like answered or want to add something? Be sure to write it in the comment section down below. You can also make a suggestion for future topics of discussion. Again, comment section down below or you can email me at soundspeeds at yahoo.com. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss out on future sound advice.